Makers, Lisa here from Andrew Designs. I just thought I'd pop a quick tutorial together to show you how I like to create recessed zipper panels. I know a first time creating something like this can be a little bit daunting, there's several pieces, what goes where, how do you finish off the open end of the zipper, what happens to the closed end of the zipper, um, and it can be a little bit confusing and almost a bit daunting um, the first few times that you make a recessed zipper panel. So I thought I'd put a tutorial together to show you how I like to do it, give you lots of information and lots of tips and tricks to really make sure the zipper is sitting where it should and it's held in place prior to stitching and then also how to top stitch and get a really nice finish on that zipper panel ready for you to then install it into the bag that you're making. So for this sample I have been working on a Shades of Yesterday tote bag and I'll pop a link to that pattern in the description below. But for now, let's get started. To create a recessed zipper panel, first you're going to need to take your long pull zipper and we're going to place it right side down on your work surface, or in my case, I'm gonna use my pressing surface because we'll need that in the next few steps. Working from the open end of the zipper, we're going to measure along three quarters of an inch and we're just gonna place a mark either side on the zipper tape. So I'm just going to move my zipper down. So I'm using um, tape that I've cut off a continuous zipper tape so I don't have teeth at the end. But if you do, just make sure your zipper is fully closed, just makes it easier to measure. And then I'm just going to measure three quarters in from the raw edges and just make a little mark on either side of my zipper tape. Just like that. It doesn't have to be a big mark. And I'm just going to actually hold the ends together as best I can and just eyeball. Yep, they look pretty square, so I'm really happy with how they're sitting. So from here, we're going to open our zipper up a good couple of inches. And we're going to finish off these raw ends or these open ends of the zipper tape. So first, having your zipper right side up, fold one side of the zipper towards you. And just give it a little squeeze or a pinch at that three quarter mark that we made earlier. So you're fo essentially folding the end of one half or one side of the zipper towards you three quarters of an inch. Once you've folded it at that three quarter mark, we're going to keep that fold in place and we're just going to fold the remaining edge or the rest of that um, zipper tape out so that it's now essentially turning on a 90 degree angle and you've got a fold in the corner which is 45 degrees. Once you're happy with your fold, and if need be, you can let it go, fold it towards you and redo it until you're really happy with the preciseness of your turn. And again, you should have 90 degrees on the teeth and there should be a nice 45 degrees on the fold in the corner. And if you hold it and look at the back, the fold of the zipper tape should be sitting right up under the edge of the teeth that's going out to the side. Just give it a good finger press and if you need to you can glue it or tape it in place however i find actually that just making a few hand stitches holds it better um, for some reason the glue and tape it doesn't hold it long enough for my liking so i just make a few hand stitches and i just use thread that's the same color as the zipper so that you can't see it in the off chance that some of the stitches show once the fabric pieces of the recess zipper panel are installed so I'm just making a couple of stitches along those folds and if need be you can always pull that zipper tape down again to really try and make sure that the teeth are making a nice 90 degree turn and then just stitch them down and just takes maybe three or four stitches just to hold it and then once you're happy with it you can trim or tie off and trim that thread and that will hold the end of the zipper tape in place. So that's one side done. So I'm just going to quickly do the second side. So again we're going to, oh first I'm going to actually load my needle up. So I won't be able to do that when I'm holding the zipper tape. Just like that. And then I'm going to fold, looking at the right side of the zipper tape, I'm going to fold it forward, pinch or squeeze at that three quarter mark, fold the teeth out and check I've got a nice 90 degree 
and a nice 45 with that fold and I'm going to stitch it in place. So once the ends of our zipper are turned and folded and stitched in place, sometimes it's really nice just to give it a tiny little press right in the corner. Be careful not to hit the teeth, just to help really stick down those folds and make sure it's all sitting exactly where it's supposed to be. And again, you can do it from the wrong side as well if you like. Just like that. So from here we're just going to pop our long pull zipper to the side for now and we're going to work on the fabric panels that are going to create that zipper panel. So taking first your two outer panels, so the outer panels for a recessed zipper panel are the ones that are going to be on top. You're going to see them when the bag is open and closed and they're the ones with the interfacing. For my patterns I don't find it necessary to interface the inner recess zipper panel pieces or the ones that are going to be on the bottom. You don't see them, they don't play as much of a part, it's more just to hide the zipper tape itself. So working on all four pieces basically, all we're going to do is just turn them right side down and we're simply going to fold each short end over half an inch, press it and then stick it down. I like to just glue it down but you can use tape if you prefer. So I'm going to work on the first one. I'm just going to use my ruler to check that it is half an inch. That looks good. Just give it a finger press and then an iron. And I'm going to do the short end on the other piece while I'm here. Check that that is half an inch. And then give that an iron as well. Oopsie. Let's move that out of the way. And then I'm going to turn my panels around. And I'm going to first, I might as well glue these ends down now. Stick that one, stick that one. So from here on this first panel, I'm going to fold the end over half an inch, just like we did at the other ends. And I'm going to check, I'm going to press. And for this remaining short edge on the outer recessed zipper panels, instead of measuring I'm actually going to use this first panel as a guide because I want the two panels to be exactly the same length. So I've just glued that second short edge down on this first panel. And then all I'm going to do is I'm just going to place the two panels right sides together, match up the two folded ends, match up the long sides and then fold this remaining short edge over so that the fold of this short edge matches the fold of the panel underneath. It may be slightly more than half an inch or slightly less, that does not matter as long as the two panels are exactly the same length that will help result in a nice even or uniform recessed zipper panel. So once you've pressed that fold in half and as you can see it actually does look like it's a bit more than half an inch but that's okay as long as my two panels are the same length then that will be fine. So I'm just going to glue that one in place and set that with the iron as well. And we can pop these two to the side just for a moment. And what I'm going to do with my two lining panels is I'm actually only going to fold over one short end half an inch and I'm going to leave the other end unfolded until we install them on the zipper panel itself. The reason for this is most fabrics, especially quilting cottons like all my patterns are designed to use, they all have a bit of stretch in them. So by pre-folding the ends over half an inch and sticking them down, it usually means that when you come to install the panels on your recessed zipper panel, there's a good chance the fabric will stretch out a little bit as you do it and that is absolutely fine, it's underneath, it won't affect the performance of the zipper panel at all. But it means that if you've already folded and preset all short edges, 
then the short edges of these two are not going to line up with the short edges of these two and you have to undo it, you have to repress it and it just creates more work. So I found over time the easiest way is to just leave the two remaining short edges unpressed and we will manually press and stick them down when we come to install these pieces onto the zipper panel. So those two are prepped for now. I'm just going to pop those up there so we don't need those right now. And from here we're going to move on and we're going to start installing our two outer zipper panels onto our long pull zipper that is nice and waiting for us. Install the zipper in your recess zipper panel pieces. First, if you've got directional fabric on your outer zipper panel pieces, make sure they're orientated correctly, depending on how you want it to line up. So when I cut my pieces out, I cut it straight through the middle here on this piece of fabric so that I had floral on both sides and it was kind of halfway through the towers that are on the fabric. However, if you don't have directional fabric, it won't matter whatsoever. So just taking your outer pieces, the ones with interfacing, just lay them out on your work surface like this in the direction and the orientation as they will be when they're attached and the bag is all finished and place your long pull zipper down the center, right side up as well. And what we're going to do is we're going to work on one side at a time. So I'm gonna work on the side closest to me to start with. Let's move that out a little bit. And all I'm going to do simply is flip the zipper up and over. So my zipper is now right sides together with my zipper panel. From here, all I'm going to do is measure quarter of an inch in from this folded end where the open end of my zipper is. So we're not working on the closed end at the moment, just the open end. I'm going to measure quarter of an inch in, and that is where the teeth of the zipper that are coming out on that 90 degree turn are going to stop. So we're not going to stitch them all the way to the end. They're going to stop quarter of an inch in from that nice folded edge. So working on that, what we're going to do is I like to glue. However, you can use tape if you prefer. You can also use pins, but if you're looking for an easy way to do this, I'd strongly suggest using glue or tape, at least for the first few times that you do this process until you get the hang of it and how things move and don't move and, and how it all works with the zipper and the teeth. So I'm just gonna place a little bit of glue along this inner edge. I'm gonna go about halfway to start with. And then I'm going to place the edge of my zipper tape on, match it up with the long raw edge of the panel. So I'm going to make sure that my teeth start quarter of an inch in from that folded edge of the panel and that the edge of the zipper tape matches the edge of the fabric. So I'm just going to move that up a little bit and just stick that down. And then just working along, try not to stretch the zipper tape too much. I'm just going to match up the edge of the zipper tape to the raw edge of the fabric. You can open your zipper up more if you like and just press it down as you go. Now I only glued about halfway along so I'm just going to set that first section first. Just like that and then I'm going to glue the second half and with the closed end of the zipper we're going to glue and attach it right off, basically off the folded end of the fabric. So from here, if you have used pins, you may like to pop to the machine and just baste the seam in place using a 1 8 of an inch seam allowance and the longest stitch length on your machine, which is normally about 5 millimeters. However, if like me you've used glue or you've used a tape, then this seam is enough for now, it should hold. So what we're going to do is then install a corresponding lining panel, which is a panel that has no interfacing on the back, and then we will stitch it together. So taking one of your lining panels, we're going to work from one end to the other. Now it doesn't matter which direction you go, I'm left-handed so I find it easiest to work from right to left. However, being right-handed, if you are, you may prefer to work from left to right. So first we're going to install or start at the folded end of the lining panel. We're going to place this lining panel right sides together with our outer panel and our zipper. It will be wrong sides on the zipper tape though, so don't worry about that, as long as the two fabrics are right sides together. 
and starting at the folded end of your lining panel we're literally just going to match it up with the folded end of the outer panel and we're going to glue it in place matching long raw edges so I'm just going to pop a little bit of glue on the corner here because remember we're going to stitch this with a quarter inch seam allowance so we don't want to come too far out with our glue or we'll, otherwise we'll have to wash it away later and I'm just going to get that end stuck down just like that so I've got my two folded ends nicely butted up together and my raw edges in this direction are nicely together as well from here all we're going to do just like when we put the zipper in place is just work along the edge gluing matching raw edges and sticking our lining panel down in place so just a little bit of glue I like to just work on one section at a time and just make sure those raw edges meet nicely along with the zipper tape and just stick it down So to finish off the remaining unfolded end of this lining panel, all we're going to do is first make sure get that out of the way, that it is stuck right up to the edge of this fold on the outer panel. So again, just a little bit of glue or tape right up to where that fold is. So just stick that down first. And then all you're going to do is just manually fold the lining panel back until you can just start to see the outer panel fold under there. And that is where the end of the lining panel is going to sit so that when you turn it over you should not be able to see the lining panel poking out from behind your outer panel so once you're happy with that fold and you've got it nicely matching up with your outer panel just give it a little press on either side it's only a very small press and then glue or tape that fold down So that is the first half of the recess zipper panel completed, it's nicely stuck together. So from here what we're going to do, you're going to come with me, we're going to head to the machine and we're going to stitch along this seam to join all these layers together using a quarter of an inch seam allowance and a normal stitch length of about 2 to 2.5 millimetres. So let's head over and do that now. So to attach these layers at the machine you're going to need your zipper foot installed on your machine. You're going to need your needle all the way to one side. I like to have it on the left and then plop my fabric under like this so that my raw edge that I'm following is on the right. I like to use uh, the function and have my needle set to the needle down position so that I know when I stop my work is held in place. And try and use uh, threads that match your fabric especially when you turn them out and top stitch. It just saves changing your threads later. We're going to use a normal stitch length of about 2 to 2.5 millimetres and we're just going to work from one end to the other. I like to work from the end where the zipper tape is coming out. It's nice and flat and it's easy to get started. So just placing your fabric under your foot, you're going to line up the raw edge of the fabric and the zipper tape with the edge of your foot so that you're stitching a quarter inch seam allowance. As you'll see, I like to actually start slightly forward of those folds and I like to make a stitch or two and then reverse back to the folds and then come forwards. No real reason other than personal preference and I find it reduces the chance of then getting bunching at the edge of the fabric. So once you've got your fabric aligned we're just going to make maybe two stitches forwards and then I'm going to put reverse on and I'm going to reverse right up to the folds of the fabric. Just like that. Now I'm not going to stitch any further. Gee, that's gone too far for my liking. So I'm just going to come forwards a little bit so that I'm still just on the edge of the fabric. Just like that. And we're not going to stitch any further or onto the zipper tape because you don't want those stitches to be visible. Once you're as far back as you can, Come take reverse off and we're going to stitch forwards maintaining that quarter inch seam allowance all the way to the other end of the panels. Mm -hmm. 
As you get down towards this end where there are zipper teeth and it's a little bit more bulky, what I like to use is my height compensation tool or it's, sometimes it's called a hump jumper, just to help level the foot out as I come up and over the teeth. Just makes it easier on my machine and gives a much tidier finish. So I'll stitch right up to those teeth and then I'm just going to pop this at the back so my foot is more level and I'm going to stitch carefully over the teeth of the zipper. If you've used a zipper that has metal teeth I would suggest you hand wind your needle so that you can ensure the needle goes between the teeth and doesn't hit them and then break. You want to come right over the teeth and onto the fabric that quarter inch gap that we left stitch right up to the edge of those folds and then we're going to pop reverse on and we're going to reverse almost an inch or so back so that we're clear of those teeth so we can make a few reinforcing stitches to finish off. It's just easier, there's less bulk and it gives a tidier finish. So just working nice and slowly back over those teeth so that your foot on your zip on your machine sorry is clear of them. So I'm just going to go back a couple more stitches and once you're nice and clear of that bulk and it's flat again you can take reverse off and just make a few stitches to reinforce and then you can finish off. So that is the first side of the recess zipper panel stitched in place. So come with me, we'll pop back to our work surface and we'll continue with the next step. So now that that first side of our zipper is enclosed between its outer and lining panels, before we press them away from the zipper tape, we're just going to trim off any excess zipper tape that's poking out at the open end. So just using scissors or a rotary cutter, just snip that off as best you can. It just tidies things up a little bit. There we go. And then from here we're going to press, oops, press these panels away from our zipper. So being careful of your zipper and obviously you don't want to melt your teeth at this point. But I just like to start with the lining of the zipper panel and then just press it out and away and just give it a little press to help encourage it to go where it's being told to go. And especially at the open end over the teeth where it's a little bit thicker. And once the lining is nicely pressed down then I will turn the zipper over and press the outer out and away as well. And the outer can be a little bit more fiddly because it's got the interfacing and sometimes it helps just to finger press it out first and then set it with the iron once you're happy and it's more in place in doing more of what it should. So once you're happy with your two panels, they should be wrong sides together now. And don't worry if, like you can see on mine, there's a little bit of the lining poking out from beyond the outer. That will get trimmed off, it does not matter. As I said earlier, the a lining fabric will tend to stretch because it's not interfaced so we will trim that down later if need be. So the last thing I like to do before I move on to the other side and this is just something that is a little bit particular but it just makes life so much easier I find is to actually glue or tape these two panels together first prior to top stitching. So I just as you know I love my sew line glue sticks and I just put a little bit up the short side along the top edge and then up the other short side as well and then refold them back to where they were just pressed, making sure the short edges meet, the nice folded short edges, and then the lining is not overhanging onto beyond the outer, just like that. So when you're looking at it from the right side of the panel like this, you should not be able to see any lining poking out on the ends. Don't worry about the long raw edge, but it's the ends that we want to make sure are nice and tidy. And that is the first side almost complete. We will top stitch once the other side is in place as well. So from here, if need be, you can close your zipper up partially just to help with orientation. And then like we did when we first prepped this first side, lay your pieces out where they're going to go on your work surface. So I've got my zipper right side up. I've got the side that we've just created. 
and then I'm going to take my remaining outer piece which is the one with interfacing I'm going to place that right side up on my work surface and then just like we did for the other side I'm going to flip my zipper up and over and this edge of the zipper tape is what I'm going to line up with this edge of the zipper panel because I find it easier to work looking in the other direction I'm just going to grab all the pieces and rotate them so now this time I know that I need to make sure that my open end is quarter of an inch in from this side because I've rotated my panels however because it's very easy to end up with a recessed zipper panel that is looking like this where one end is not in line with the other it magically happens it happens to all of us it's happened to me before and it can be rather frustrating when you put the time in to get it really perfect and it comes out wonky how I found the best way to fix that up or to eliminate the chance of that happening is actually to line up both ends as I glue my zipper in place in this next step so just Popping your zipper back so it is right sides together with your panel. What we're going to do is I'm going to actually glue this closed end, so to speak, in place first using the fold of my panel that's already attached as a guideline for where my zipper needs to be installed on this panel. So I'm going to place a little bit of glue along the raw edge that I am gluing to maybe about two inches worth just to get started just like that and then before I just go and stick my zipper in place I'm actually going to eyeball and make sure that this line here follows all the way down to this edge here what I can also do is I can hover fold my zipper tape back a bit and I can see might be hard to see on the video but I can see that the edge of my pieces that are already attached is lining up nicely with the edge of the panel I'm about to attach so when I'm happy with that I can just walk it back down checking that it's all nice and straight and if need be you could use a ruler or something if you wanted to make sure it was not all nice and square I pull that along a little bit actually and once you're happy with that alignment then you can stick just that end of the zipper panel in place or the zipper sorry in place Okay, I'm just cross checking by lifting it up that I have a nice line from the short folded edges of those panels and I'm just going to stick that down so that is held in place and then what I'm going to go and work on the open end and again I'm not actually going to measure it this time I'm just going to close my zipper up almost all the way grab my glue I'm going to gently ease this installed panel out so that the folded edges are aligning and this one's much easier to see this time so I'm just going to make sure that that is where it needs to be I'm going to make sure that my zipper tape is sitting nice and flat and then I'm going to eyeball it I'm going to see well this fabric is in line with the folded edge here but that looks like a lot more than quarter of an inch I am going to check that move the glue out of the way and yes it's probably more like three-eighths of an inch so I'm just going to ease my zipper tape forward to check that it is so it is closer to quarter of an inch now if I close up my zipper all the way so now so what I had to do to get mine to line up and yours might be slightly different was I had to stretch my zipper tape out just slightly and pull it forward as as you know zipper tapes have a little bit of give just had to pull that forward slightly so that it was closer to a quarter of an inch while still keeping these folded edges in line with each other once you're happy with that placement you can and you know where it needs to go you can place a little bit of glue again just an inch or two just to get things stuck down to begin with so I'm put my ends there ease that out and it's going to go there I think make sure your raw edge of your fabric matches the edge of your zipper tape and once you've stuck it in place this helps set it with the iron and this is where glue or tape really comes in handy rather than pins I find 
again it is personal preference. So once you've got that end stuck down, all that's left to do is ease the middle into place. So as you can see my middle is bunching out slightly, that is absolutely fine because what we're going to do is gently pull on the zipper tape and it will help the fabric go and be nice and flat next to the zipper tape. So all I'm going to do is just get a bit more glue, paste a bit of glue along the centre there, pull those out and ease them into place and stick it down. So that is the first piece of that second side popped in place. It's looking really good and I'm just looking, I turn it over and I'm just looking to make sure that these ends are still lined up, which they are. And at the open end, I can eyeball and see that these edges are still lined up, which they are. So that's really good and I'm really happy with how that's looking. So now that we've got the placement, I'm just going to open this up to get rid of this first half because we don't need it there just for the moment. Just like that. And then we can go ahead and install our remaining lining panel. So again, working from one end to the other, I, you're going to start with the folded edge first. Just pop a bit of glue on your zipper tape. Match up short folded edges and long raw edges on the outer side or the zipper tape side of the fabric. And work your way along just like we did on the first side. And that's those two panels glued in place. So from here, all you're going to do is stitch to attach just like we did for this first side. So pause the video, head to your machine and stitch using a quarter inch seam allowance and a normal stitch length of about two to 2.5 millimeters and pop back here when you're ready to continue. So once you've stitched that second side down, your zipper panel should be looking something like this. So just like last time, we're going to press these two panels away from the zipper tape. And as I said earlier, I like to start with the lining panel. So I'm just going to work my way along the lining panel first, and then I will do the outer. And make sure you've trimmed off any excess zipper tape that was poking out from the open end of the zipper first before you do this. looking really good so from here we're just going to glue these two panels together and then we will be ready to top stitch just like that so from here, come with me, we're going to head over to the machine and we're going to top stitch around these two sides to finish them off and then there will be just a little bit left to go and you will have a beautiful recessed zipper panel. So to top stitch your panels in place, you're going to need a normal foot on your machine. I like to use my walking foot. I find it easier to gauge the seam allowance and get my stitching nice and straight using my walking foot as opposed to my zipper foot. However, it is personal preference and try with both and see which one you prefer basically. You're going to need your stitch length set to a top stitching length of about 3 to 3.5 millimeters. Make sure you have thread that matches your fabric and that your needle is set to the needle down position. What we're going to do is I'm going to start on the short edge of this panel here and I'm going to stitch up that short edge and then along essentially the top or the inner edge of that panel. So I'm just going to place it under my foot. We're going to stitch with a 1 8th of an inch seam allowance and because where I'm starting is essentially going to be hidden in the seam that this panel gets joined to, I'm just going to make one stitch back and forth to reinforce. doesn't need too much at this point. 
So we're going to stitch up to this first corner using a 1 8 of an inch seam allowance. And when I get to that corner I'm going to check that I am nice and square in that corner. And that looks really good. I might actually come just a smidge further. So I'm just going to manually hand wind a teeny tiny stitch. That's better. There we go. And once you're in that corner, you rotate 90 degrees and we're going to stitch down this first long side of the zipper panel. Working nice and slow and steady. And because of the bulk of the fabric, you should find that the teeth on the zipper shouldn't interfere with your foot. If they do, for some reason, you may need to then use your zipper foot. But for me, my foot seems to glide along fine right over top of the teeth. So that's why I prefer to use this foot, it's just easier for me. So when we get to the second corner, we're going to stitch right out to it. And again, if you've used metal teeth, you will need to hand wind your needle over the teeth, which you know are in there. I have hit the teeth on mine, so I'm just going to try and tell it what to do. Where do I want to go? Let's try here. Yep, there we go. Okay. And we're going to stop one eighth of an inch from that end. It's okay if you come a little bit towards the end because you essentially you're squishing those folds together, but you don't want to be more than one eighth of an inch away from it. You want to get closer rather than further from it. Once you're at that corner and you're happy with your position, if need be, place your height compensation tool or whatever it is um, behind your foot if you want to just level them out, which I like to do. And then we're going to stitch down to the raw corner. So once here, what I really like to do on my recessed zipper panels is also stitch along this raw edge just using a basting stitch just to hold the edges together just in case the glue or tape was to give way. I know that all my fabric would be held together and ready for me to use later. So I'm just going to drop my foot. I'm just going to increase my stitch length all the way up to the longest it will go, which is five millimeters. And I'm just going to stitch just using a one eighth of an inch still down this raw edge. And then just make a couple of stitches forwards and back to finish off. And that is the first side of the recessed zipper panel. Move these threads. Top stitched in place and it looks beautiful. So from here, pause the video, repeat that process to top stitch your second recessed zipper panel down and then pop back to your work surface and we will continue. So now that we've top stitched both sides, your zipper panel should be looking something like this. So if need be, just give both sides of the panel a nice little press just to help set the stitches. Doesn't have to be much. And if you found that your lining has stretched a bit and is poking out on either side, just give it a trim down now just to tidy things up. So my lining is poking out a little bit here, so I'm just gonna give that a little bit of a trim down So from here, all that's left to do is to create and install our zipper tab. So first what we're going to do is we're going to take our zipper tab piece, and this is our small little rectangle that has interfacing on the back. We're going to fold it in half right sides together, matching short raw edges. And you're going to pin or clip, and I'm just going to place one little clip down the side there. And then you're going to pop over to your machine and you're going to stitch to join down this short edge using a quarter inch seam allowance. Normal stitch length of about 2 to 2.5 millimetres and pop back here when you're ready to continue. So once you've stitched down your zipper tab to join the short edges, just pop your fingers on the inside of it and use your thumbs to help flatten out that seam, essentially pressing that seam open, but you're just using your fingers for this part. Just give it a good squeeze, just like that. That else looks really good. So pop that to the side just for a moment. And what we're going to do is measure and trim off the excess zipper on our recess zipper panel. So working from the short folded end of your panels on the closed end of your zipper, we're going to measure out one and a half inches and two inches, and we're gonna make marks on the zipper tape. 
So I'm going to start with one and a half and I'm just going to place my ruler right at the edges of those folds and then I'm going to mark on my zipper tape where that comes to just like that and then I'm going to repeat that for two inches as well I'm trying to make it all nice and square with each other oops just like that so once you've got your two marks in place you can go ahead and take your scissors or you can rotary if you're on a rotary surface with your cutter and we're going to cut off the excess zipper tape at that two inch mark so I'm just going to use my pinking shears oh sorry my dressmaking shears try and get that cut as straight as you can So from here we can install our zipper tab. So what I find easiest and what we're going to do is essentially the zipper tab is going to sit like this with the seam down the center, but it will obviously be right side out when it's finished. So to position it, we're going to pop the, well essentially thread the tab onto the end of the zipper. Make sure that the seam you've used on your zipper tab is down so that it is essentially towards the wrong side of your zipper or your zipper panel sorry and we're just going to pop the zipper into the tab and then you'll need to bunch up your tab because what we want to do is make sure that this outer raw edge of the zipper tab comes up to the one and a half inch marks that we've made just before so you'll have a little bit of bunching that's only temporary don't worry and then just make sure on the wrong side of the zipper panel that your seam on the zipper tab is as down the center as much as you can with the teeth of the zipper. And then once you've got the alignment and you're happy with it, just pin the zipper tab in place as best you can to make sure it stays there. that's nice and square and my seam is down the center where the teeth are so that's really good so once you've got your zipper tab in place pause the video you're going to head over to your machine and you're going to stitch to attach using a half inch seam allowance now that half inch seam allowance is measured in from the raw edge of the zipper tab if you want to look at it a different way you'll meet your stitching one inch in from the edge of the zipper tape itself either or you're going to get the same result I like to use the fabric as my guide so you're going to stitch two to three times across here especially over the teeth to make sure there's a really good join and you're going to use the half inch allowance from the edge of your fabric on your zipper tab make sure that's stitched really well use a normal stitch length of about 2 to 2.5 millimeters and pop back here when you're ready to continue so once your zipper tab is stitched in place it should be looking something like this and if need be you can trim the end of your zipper tape if you have any loose threads and even consider um, using a lighter to seal the ends or some fray check or something just to stop it fraying out while we complete this last step of the zipper tab so from here all we need to do is just pull the zipper tab off the end of the zipper nice and carefully and just make sure that everything is sitting nice and square so you want to make sure that across here on both sides is nice and flat it's pulled out nice and level and when you're happy with that just give it a bit of a press to help set that new little seam that we've just made so from here all that's left to do is finish off this raw edge of the zipper tab to do that we're sim simply going to fold it in on itself half an inch right up to the end of the zipper tape and then press or and press it glue it down and stitch it in place to do that it can be a little bit fiddly but the easiest way I found is to work on these long sides first and then fussy with the corners after that so working on the front all you're going to do is just fold the front of that over and down into the pocket folding it over the front of the zipper tape 
and just give it a bit of a finger press on either side of that zipper tape where you can feel the teeth and then you've got the tape. Once you've got that folded, turn your zipper panel over and repeat that for the back again, trying to keep the seam allowance nice and flat and this time the fold is going to go behind the zipper tape essentially so it is right sides together with the fold we just made. So just tucking that in and just give it a, a bit of a half squeeze. We kind of want to set it but not completely so we may need to change it shortly. So once you've got those two bits tucked in we're going to work on the sides. So just squeezing your zipper tab sides together to kind of open it out a little bit you can pull them out and then very carefully just work in on that side to help create a nice tidy fold just like when we create handles and things and we get our nail in there to recreate the fold and really get a nice crisp edge that's what we're doing here as well so you can see how this side I haven't done and it wants to bunch up this side I have put my nail in and my finger and it's sitting nice and flat. So we're going to repeat that for this side as well. Pull them apart and feel the fabric and make sure it sits and folds nice and square. Retuck the front if need be. Mine just tried to creep out a little bit. And what you're aiming for here is to have a nice square of fabric. So if that means that you need to pull a little bit out or tuck a little bit more in here or there to get that square finish, that's absolutely fine. As long as once you are happy with it and you give it a press with the iron, it is as square as you can get it. It can be fiddly and it does take a bit of practice, but if you persist, usually you result in a nice tidy zipper tab. And it's the small things that count in a bag, right? The little details. So I'm just checking from the wrong side as well and I actually want the underside of my zipper tab to come almost to that front fold but not quite because I don't want it visible from the front, I want it to be hidden. So that's sitting really nice. I'm just going to, does it feel funny? You can actually feel it with your fingers if it's sitting flat or if it's bunched, I find. So that's square across the back, across the front, let's tuck that bit in there. That's pretty good as well. I'm quite happy with that. It is harder if you haven't cut your zipper tape nice and square because that is essentially the edge that we're folding up to. But I think overall that's pretty good. So I'm going to give that a little bit of a press. Just tuck that bit back in just to help set those folds. that's looking really good so before we pop over and stitch that closed let's let that cool down a bit I find it really helps to shove a bit of glue in there to hold it all in place prior to stitching so that is our zipper tab all folded and pressed in place and as you can see on the wrong side of the zipper tab my out the top side or the right side is poking out just slightly that is exactly what I like it means that from the right side you can't see the back and it's nice and tidy so once you are happy with your zipper tab pause the video get set up at your machine you're going to need a normal foot on your machine a top stitching length of about 3 to 3.5 millimeters and make sure your needle is set to the needle down position. I'll see you at the machine. So to stitch around the edges of our zipper tab we're going to use a 1 8 of an inch seam allowance and what I find easiest because typically your foot is going to want to jump off the edge of the teeth as you're coming down these sides so I find it easiest to actually have my needle all the way to the left hand side and then I use the center of my foot, I have a mark on the center and that goes along the edge of the fabric. Just reduces the chance of the teeth actually wanting to jump off and the off, sorry, of the foot jump, wanting to jump off the teeth. And I also use my height compensation tool to help level out the foot so it behaves as it's supposed to. 
So I'm going to start in this top back corner and we're going to stitch across this folded edge first. So just placing your fabric right in the corner, we're not going to do any re reversing or reinforcing. We're going to tie off our threads with a simple little reef knot and use a needle to tuck them in. And that just gives a really tidy and invisible finish to the joining of the threads. So when you are lined up and in place, oh, I'll just move that out of the way for now. Grab the tails of your threads and we're simply going to stitch across this top folded edge using a 1 8 of an inch seam allowance. When we get to that corner, because this is a top stitching seam again and we want it to look really good, I just manually hand wound my needle to make sure it was right in the corner where I wanted it. So from here we're ready to come up that first short side and I'm just going to pop my height compensation tool behind my foot and down the side slightly just so that the foot is more level and hopefully it then feeds through relatively smoothly. So when you're lined up, just stitching 1 8 of an inch down that first short side, readjusting things as necessary. And again, when you get to the bottom corner, just make sure you stop right in that corner at a 1 8 of an inch in from both sides. And then we can turn and we're going to stitch across that um, bottom edge of the zipper tab. So just fold up your recessed zipper panel and we're going to stitch nice and gently across the bottom of the tab. And then turn and get ready to come up that final side of the zipper tab. Right back to where we started. So it's going to take it nice and slow. And again, we want to make sure our last stitch goes down right down where our first stitch was so that they join up seamlessly and you can't tell that that's where the stitching started from. So once you've made that stitch, you can take out your zipper tab and that looks beautiful. Just check on the back, you've caught that bottom side of the fabric on the fold and it looks great. So from here, we're just going to pop back to our work surface and we're going to finish off our zipper tab and our recessed zipper panel will be complete. So to secure the threads from our top stitching, all we're going to do is simply take the threads on the top, grab your needle and just pass them through to the wrong side of the zipper tab. Right through that stitch you made at the beginning and end, that single stitch. Just like that. And then flip your panel over like to tie the ends of mine up and then we're going to just tie a simple little reef knot and once your threads are knotted just take your needle again and duck them down and into the zipper tab so they are nicely hidden and then trim off the excess threads and our zipper tab is complete and our recess panel is complete. Well done. And that's all there is to it. You now have a perfectly aligned recess zipper panel ready to install in the bag pattern that you are making or for use next time. I hope you found this tutorial helpful and I hope you've learned lots of little tips and tricks. As always, if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to contact me via the contact page of my website. And feel free to ask any questions or share photos of your work using Andrew Designs Patterns in our Patterns group on Facebook as well. And I'll pop a link to that group in the description below. Until next time, happy sewing!